Howdy hey, folks, it's Diecast Buffet here again, and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003. It's time for the 2004 Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway, and let's get an updated point standing. So we are officially second in the standings. We're ahead of Dale Jarrett and Sterler Marlin, 111 points behind Jeff Gordon. Whew. This championship battle is getting crazy. With Tony Stewart's big win at Bristol, it still does not help him much in the points. It really doesn't, and Johnson is dropping like a rock. Now he's 280 behind. As I mentioned, he was at 181. Now he's at 280. Uh, his championship is slipping. And as of right now, I think you got to be underneath 300. I'm going to give Tony Stewart a slide because he at 304. I still think he's in it, guys. I really do. Mathematically, he's still in it. Realistically, he's not. Realistically, the championship start stops at Mark Martin. That is the realistic, you know, attitude for it. So, this race, it's the Darlington Raceway Southern 500. Next week, it's Richmond International Raceway underneath the lights. Then we got the night race at Las Vegas and the Talladega Race EA Sports 500. Oh boy, Bristol was, oh, Bristol was not fun. We're going to run the sicko car. Let's go to the Southern 500. All right, folks, so we qualified 23rd for the Southern 500. We won this race last year in 2003, and Tony Stewart won it in 2002. Who's going to win it in 04? Let's hit it down trackside at Darlington Raceway. MRN Radio is here at the great Southern tradition, the annual Mountain Dew Southern 500, here at Darlington Raceway in Darlington, South Carolina. Barney, drivers love coming to Darlington because of its history, but they often leave wishing they hadn't shown up. Why is that? The tight groove they have here makes this a very difficult racetrack. It takes total concentration, but the drivers all race long to be successful here. Rusty Wallace is one of those drivers who always seems to be running up front. He's had an incredible run of success in winning races and finishing in the top 10 in points. Add to that a solid qualifying program, and it's no big surprise that Rusty is one of NASCAR's winningest drivers. Jeff Burton will try to use this race to close in on the points lead. Oh, yeah, and all these guys in the top five are fighting hard week in and week out to gain as many points as possible. It's harder to pick up spots once you're into the top five. Jeremy Mayfield changed teams after the 2001 season, ending a four-year tenure with Roger Penske. A lot of people, Ray Evernham included, believe Mayfield still has a lot of untapped potential. He certainly has shown flashes of brilliance in the past. Maybe he can put that number 19 Dodge in victory lane today. Engines are fired. We got two rookies on the front row. You got the Kmart car, the Goodyear car in the front row. It's a Southern 500. It's the last crown jewel race of the year. You want to win this race, man. This is the Southern 500. I want to get another one. You know, we won it last year. I want to win another one, man. This is the big one. Greg Biffle starting up front again. In the fourth spot, finished very good last week at Bristol. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, who fell out of the, the championship points battle. I, I think he might just be out of it now, but he was running there for a little bit. Jeff Gordon in eighth. We're starting deep in the field, though. 23rd, you know, it's going to be hard to make it back up, but we can do it. Here we go. The Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway is underneath. Underway, excuse me. I was diving underneath the 18. <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Man, we had a decent start there, but now they're kind of firing back. So this is a 36-lap race around Darlington. Let me tell you, it is a survival. Take care of the equipment. Don't push it. It is going to be a long race. You got to make sure you keep your nose clean here because if you keep getting the wall, let me tell you, your car does slow down. Your overall top speed slows down. 
Gotta take care of the race car, man. And when your tires get old, the corner exit is where the car will bite. It will turn on a dime and it will slam right into that wall. Oh, a little bit of a run there. Trying to run these cats down up in front of us. Whoa, whoa, car gets whacked loose. Bobby Labonte pulled up behind his car and just got extremely loose. Oh my god. Wow, that was... Oh no, the burden. Oh my god, Martin Burton. Now they're still cheering. Whoa, we're running up the hill. It is a tight groove racetrack, man. And something about this car, we're just not running good right now. Oh, keep it out of the fence, man. Not, not now. It is way too early to be running that wall. Car is just, it is very loose. It's very touch and go. I feel like we could be running better right now, though. Come on, car. You can do better than this. Car is just so slow on acceleration. I don't know why. I, I made the car even faster on acceleration after qualifying. I don't know why it's slower. It, it, this does not make sense. Either I didn't make a big enough adjustment, or it, I, maybe I don't know what the wrong way. I doubt it because I went the same adjustment route I always do. Who knows? Either way, let's get a top five update here. Wallace, Newman, K. Jones, Jeff Gordon, and Greg Biffle, your top five here at Darlington Raceway. You know, we don't run two races at Darlington. We only run one. We don't run the 400 mile, you know, miler. We only run the 500 miler. As the field's getting stacked up here, someone must have got loose. But we got Dale Jarrett right in front of us. You know, we're second in points, 111 points behind. Gordon right now is in a great opportunity to gain even more points on the field, you know. This is the 11th race to go. There's 10 to go next week, next week so championship, you know, is starting to shape up. Realistically, there's only five cats in it. Marlon, Martin, oh my goodness, some beating and banging there. Burton, you gotta have Jared in there, and of course, Gordon. One of those is gonna be a 2004 Winston Cup champion. We're much better in one and two. One and two, you can almost flat foot it. It's got enough banking, and it's, you know, it's wide enough that you can. A little contact with Bobby Labonte as he gets way loose. Trying to work our way up there right now. So if we can just kind of keep the car, you know, rolling with a little throttle to it, we can gain on them either when they're off throttle. And that's the key, is just get through the corner better than the opponent. They're kind of getting bunched up right now, so it's a great opportunity to run the bottom, make some passes. But you gotta get that run before you can do any of that. I already got a car out of the race down pit road. I hope to God it's Jeff Gordon, but I doubt it. Oh, Nelly, that could have just destroyed the back end of Jimmy Spencer. The target dodge. Running 22nd. I mean, we're in a log jam back here, but if you can get to the bottom, you can get underneath them. It moves the AI up the hill. I, I, I can't be too aggressive right now and tear up the race car. There we go. Get a good run underneath. Oh, sorry. Man, I made a little contact with Jeff Green, but hey, we were able to gain some spots and keep up with Dale Jarrett. Matt Kenseth's ahead of him. Hopefully he'll do some blocking as he's our teammate. And we got last week's winner, Tony Stewart, and the 2002 winner of the Southern 500. Car, man. It just does not have the acceleration I wanted. Like, we could have made this car a whole lot faster when it is. If I would have made a better adjustment. Oh, sorry, Jarrett. You know, Darlington is one of those racetracks where it's okay to use up the right side of your car. You know, it's, it's a tradition. You know, they've been coming here since, what, 48, I think? I mean, this is... It's one of the most historical racetracks in America. And, of course, you got the signature Darlington stripe and, you know, every... Pretty much every car in the field always gets. But it, it's just one of those, you know, blue collar, beating and banging style racetracks that everyone knows and loves. And the unique shape of the racetrack, it just makes for great racing, you know. A little bit of banking, 
you know, it's a long enough straightaway, but it's got an odd shaped corner in three and four, and that just makes for great racing. You know, everyone's got to check up early, but you know, the bottom's paved, so if you really wanted to, you could sell it on down there in the bottom. And if you can make the car stick, you can do a slide job and get around them. And, you know, the main groove of the racetrack is only two lanes wide, and with that, there's not much room to go. It's great racing, man, great racing. And oftentimes, you know, the drivers, they run the outside line around here, so they're just right on edge. Look at the run. We're going to get around Matt Kenseth here. Got to be really careful not making too much contact. Car's getting very tight off the corner. But, hey, we're moving up through the pack. Pit stops will be coming up decently soon. Oh, a little bit of a slide job on Tony Stewart. 36 lapper here guys, 36 lapper, so pit stops around, what, lap 18? Probably around there. Oh, underneath the 26 of Todd Bodine. Maybe three and fours are a better corner, man. Maybe, I mean, look at the run we get. Just move Robbie Gordon up the hill, I mean. Wow, and uh, did someone just go down pit road? I don't, I don't remember being 15th. I don't know. Maybe we we're just that fast. It's a little off the throttle there. Could have been a little bit more aggressive, but I want to find Jeff Gordon, man. I want to get around him. It's been our top five update. To make a little contact with the 26. That's gonna stack everyone up. I'll get that update after three and four because if I do it right now, the car will not turn and go straight in the fence. Update, Wallace, Gordon, Newman, Earnhardt Jr., and Biffle. Rusty Wallace could be a player to win this Southern 500. Who knows? Come on, just need a little bit of a run. If I can get around Robbie Gordon. Darlington is just... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Gordon. Yep, that did not work. The car just gets so tight off the corner exits. But I was about to say... That the racetrack is so tight with only being two lanes, you know. It really does make technical very... You can be very passive around Darlington. You can be very aggressive. Either way, it's, you know, both allowed. It's such a tight groove racetrack, though. Oh, we just walked up the hill there. So we're tenth spot. Everyone's kind of pitting. You know, I think we could go a little bit longer. I don't know. Tell you what, let's go ahead and pit. Let's go ahead and pit. No damage repair. Looks everything. Everything looks good. 15 PSI. Keep that wedge maxed out to the left. Let's go. And let's drop my bottle cap from my water. On good pit stop, guys. Good pit stop. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, bad pit stop. Mm. It got slow in the left rear. And there goes Sterling Marlin. Bad pit stop for the 99 here on the Southern 500 at Donington Raceway. Trying to get a, trying to get something to here, man. Trying to get something here. And just, ugh. Marlin's just sailing away, and there goes Jarrett too. Whoa, fast car and Ricky Rudd right there. Running the need for speed paint scheme. Oh, I just realized I'm in turns three and four at Darlington. You can't go full throttle. Imagine that. Got our Darlington stripe. You know, if we're going 160 around a racetrack, you're going pretty fast. Just the feeling of it, man. You're going a lot faster than it really looks. We know the limits of our race car now. Now we know exactly how much to push it, how much we need to gain, how much we can lose. You know, we can push our car a lot more in one and two than I think we've been doing during the race. But do we have enough to get a victory, man? Go back to back here in South Carolina. 
I have no clue, guys. It's a 16 lap second half here. I mean, you got a long ways to go. Long ways to go. I don't, I don't even know where the leader could be. He could be way up front. Who knows? There's Tony Stewart. You're gonna get a huge run around Ricky Ride. Oh no, I thought that was the Need for Speed car. No, that's actually the Muppets car. Oh, Ricky Ride's still there. A bit of side drafting. Gotta check up, let it roll. Check up, check up, check up. Floor it. So yeah, your leader is Jeff Gordon right now, and he is just so far out front. I hope and pray we get a caution. That would be amazing. You know, all we can do right now is just get ready for Richmond next race, because that is going to be our best opportunity to win probably all year long. It's Richmond. We already won there this year. Can we win again? We won the day race, and I'm never going back to the day race. one. That was... Oh, that was terrible, bro. That was terrible, the day race, because not only... Not only did we win the race by two laps ahead of the second place cat because it glitched out and everyone would pit every ten laps, or five laps, excuse me. It was just an obliteration, so no question. Next year, we are definitely going back to the night race with the Pontiac inside the 400. Oh my god, it was, it was rough. Kids, oh, a little bit of a scrape there. Running 15th, I'm hoping for a caution right now. I need someone to spin out or something. Top 10 is definitely in the book still. We can get to top 10 if we work hard enough. Car's gonna age real quickly though. Oh, tag the wall there. Oh man. Still got over 10 laps to go here. Jeff Gordon, I mean, he is just in a league of his own. I mean, if he's going to win this championship, it's because of his late season run. No question. I mean, he has just been so good. You know, he should have won Watkins Glen. His teammate won. He won Michigan. He was a non-factor at Bristol. And now he is just out front. Head of... No, wait. Oh, what? Rusty Wallace is out front now. Awesome. That's what we need. We need Wallace to win this race. We do not need Gordon to win because of points. So hopefully Rusty Wallace will hold off Jeff Gordon. Maybe put him in the fence so we can get some positions. I mean, I want to stay in the top ten. we got to have a much better finish than this. That's for sure. Meanwhile, everyone's getting stacked up over here, so this is a great opportunity to get some po some points. You know, we got less than 10 laps to go now. We still got a lot of time, bro. Nine laps around Darlington, let me tell you, that is not a short stint. That is a long stint. I see Dale Jarrett. I see Sterling Marlin, so there's some cats in the championship hunt. We can get around and neutralize any opportunity for them to gain points on us. Look at that, just smooth gliding on the inside, huge run. Around 31. Now can we get around the 25 and company? Look at that, just gliding on the bottom, man. It's like a glazed donut. Oh, sorry, Jarrett. Clear him, there we go. So we're around Dale Jarrett. I mean, we're already ahead of him in points, but now this negates any opportunity for him to be able to gain any points back on us. We've got Kurt Busch right there, so the opportunity for a top 10 is wide open. I see Sterling Marlin up there. And we all know how dominant he has been the early portion of the season. All of last year. He can easily just go on a string of wins, man, and just take this championship over. want to get up to that 40 car and get around him so we don't have to worry about him for this race and go to Richmond and just blow the doors off the competition and win that. That's our goal. Go to Richmond, blow the doors off the competition, dominate it and win. That's the goal. Sorry, Kurt Busch, but I'm going for it, man. I want to catch that 40 car.
There we go. Great, great run around Kurt Busch and company. Try to side draft the 141. Oh, nope. 97's going to fight back. Ooh, Nelly. Now we're underneath the 141 again. The car's going to step out a little bit. It's okay. We'll clear them. Now we're in the top 10, but Sterling Marlin is pulled away pretty significantly. I don't know if we're going to have enough to get him down. We go. Another spot up to ninth place. Top 5 update Wallace Gordon. Newman, Earnhardt Jr., and the fifth place guy, Michael Waltrip. Great run for DEI right now, but Rusty Wallace looks like he's going to win this race. I think we can run down Marlin. I, I still do. We just got to just have a very clean last four laps here at Darlington. Very clean. <sighs> Almost hit the wall there. You know, our best opportunity to gain, you know, any time on him is in morning two. Okay, buddy, we're faster than the leader. Let's get up there. I wish I was faster than the leader right now. Maybe he'll get held up a little bit and we'll be able to gain some time on him. I doubt it, but, you know, wishful thinking. Tires are aging pretty badly here, and I just, maybe not. Maybe we don't have enough to get Sterling Marlin. Either way, I hope Wallace wins this race and wins this, this 500 here at South Carolina. Ooh, hit the brakes a lot there. Tires are aged, cars beat up a little bit. You know, it, it's definitely been a raced version die cast, I'll tell you that. A little bit, but not enough. Definitely not enough because the white flag is about to be waving and we're still, what, 15 car lengths away from Sterling Marlin. Use the wall a little bit. Maybe it'll help us turn. Still nowhere near enough. I wish I had gain on Marlin. I wish I could. We need probably one more lap, to be honest. One more lap. Luckily, Greg Biffle's going to hold him off here. Good job, Biffle. Good job. He gets himself another top ten. We come home ninth. And your winner is... Rusty Wallace wins the 2004 Mountain Dew Southern 500. There were only a few Whew. changes. What a race. What a event. Sure, we didn't finish ahead of Sterling Marlin, but guess what, guys? We gave it everything we had. Jimmy Johnson gets a top 10. Biffle, Rivers, Michael Walter gets a top 5. What a event. So, we started 23rd. We finished 9th. We won this race last year. We didn't get the W. We didn't lead any laps. Jeff Gordon, he gains 30-something points. Yeah, about 30 points, so... That's fine, but Rusty Wallace dominates the race with 31 laps led. Sterling Marlin, he just he just gets four points ahead of us. But hey, we gained eight points on Tail Jarrett, so I'll take that. Tony Stewart finishes miserably in 19th, and uh, Mark Martin, nothing good there. We're going to gain some good points on Martin, but yeah, we should still be second in the points. But man, we gave it everything we had, rallied back, got a top 10. I'll take it, guys. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and also hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're having a great one. And Diecast Buffet, signing off.